Fuego. Studio 42 to tell you about how not to be productive and healthy today and tomorrow, but 10 years down the road. John, take it away. Yeah, it's a great debate that both uh, Al and I have pitched a long time in the game, so we were taught differently than is being taught today. Uh, it's a different form of success that's being rewarded today. But I, I, I want to say there's no one way to do it. There's Good. a million ways to do it. Yep. But the one thing in our era, longevity was a big part of our careers. We've got a chance to co collectively do 40 years. So there's a theory out there that exists today that may not exist back then. I was a big little muscle guy, meaning you want to take care of the little muscles, which will help the big muscles do what they want to do. And I think, unfortunately, today they're attacking the big muscles and relying so heavily on the big muscles that we're, av we're avoiding some of those stop signs that your body lets you know you're about to run a stop sign, you're about to increase your injury rate, that the big muscles just keep going and then that's why we're having, I think, so many injuries. So some of the things that we were taught that were important to pitch, I think, not only in a consistent level but a long term. Everyone wants to know what's the perfect mechanics. Well, you know, aside from like Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, some of the guys that were prototypical power, Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox command, as simple as you can make it, the better it was for us. So we tried to stay inside. I tried to stay inside, use all my power inside my legs. In other words, here's the difference. Outside your legs, getting strong out here is going to be rotationally great to go this way. So you're going to, you're going to, you're going to take the, all the power and whip that your arm has. When you rotation and use your bigger muscles outside, you're going to go this way, and you see a lot of hard throwers fall off the mound. I wanted to stay inside. I learned how to adapt because the way I started pitching was different than the way I ended it. I wanted to use the inside of my feet, the inside of my knees, and this, this trunk area to stay inside, go, and then take off. And so therefore, that allowed all the transformation of my body to, to bear most of the whip and force and put less on my shoulder so that it throw in 94, 95, 95. So in other words, here's a drill yep. that you don't see anymore, but putting it on a flat so I don't Go fall ahead. flat on my face, Go ahead. is there was a sense that, you know, the two by four drill. Well, if you're going to throw the ball 98 miles an hour, and you're going to use all your force, it'll be hard to stay on this two by four because you're going to use everything you have to get here and then you're going to fall off this way. So we kind of use this drill to stay on plane, okay. right? That was just one of those drills to keep you online with going to home plate. Because if you stay on plane and use the right muscles, to stay under control. I like you that. stay under control. That's just one example. All right, so really quick, Smoltzy. Because you're a Hall of Famer, I'm not. Would you pull the camera around here a little bit? I'm going to say this based on a lot of study, mostly through ASMA and Dr. Andrews. You had Tommy John, I had shoulder. Right. The biggest red flag is to be late at foot contact. All of this stuff, right. John is exactly right. There are different ways of carving the turkey. You could do, we could watch a big league game, guys over their head, not over their head. Some guys are low three-quarter, sidearm, high three, over the top. But there's a couple things that, in my opinion, that you have to be on time. The delivery is all about getting your timing, cadence, rhythm, and tempo so that when you're at the point of debarkation of breaking, you're under control. Stay over so, the rubber. So this is break. You know, your break point is here, right? So when I start to take my hip to home, I better be ready to get my arm out. The big thing for me, and I watch a lot of tape now, is that at foot contact, you better make sure that your arm is not less than parallel to the ground, not shouldn't be parallel to the ground, at foot contact. Yep. It should be north of parallel. Ideally, because these guys are throwing 95 to 100 miles an hour, and the, oh, the only collateral ligament on a, a cadaver has 75 newton meters before it snaps, is that you want to be in throwing position. So whatever the delivery was, John, you went overhead? Yeah. I did not. You want to do the, whatever the leg kick is, when you get out and you land, you better be in position to throw the baseball. Paramount. The next thing for me, John, and I'm curious about you, is at ball release, as soon as that ball gets out of your hand, you firm up. Yep. It's a true definable uh, 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 indicator that you transfer your weight. And to me, the soft throwers aren't able to do it because they didn't generate much energy off the backside. So soft throwers could land and never, never firm up. 
Generally speaking, I guarantee you firmed yeah. up because hard throwers, it's a pole vault. You land, throw, and pole vault so off of your front side. So to pick on that, where I would use a visual, I pretended there was a brick wall in front of me so that when I All right, landed. so here, play along. You're my coach. What do you mean? So, so the brick wall's right here. When you get to landing point, post, firm up, firm up, and stay behind that wall. Now, it's a, it's a way to keep yourself behind, get your arm timing, and then get to that front side. So it would look like this. The, the over-exaggeration would be like this. I'm, I'm already in the stretch position. I would get to this position and then learn to fall. Now, you're not going to do that in the game, but too many times we would get out in front over that knee and then go through that brick wall this way. Okay, all right. And Chase not it. Correct. And so I had this vision of this brick wall right here. I'd get time and get here, wham, and really try to exaggerate getting to my front side fr firm knee and then follow through. Have so you that seen this one? I don't know that I, I have. I know Verlander uses it to stay tight in here so you don't get extend out to have a ball here. You play light catch when you play flat ground to keep the ball in here so that when you throw, you stay in the box. You're stronger here than you are out here. This becomes vulnerable. Right. You could do it this way, or if guys that drop their arm and they drop their elbow to get the arm up. Another way is to put this inside so that you stay strong front side. Don't, don't flare open. Therefore, you'd open up. That's one little drill. Wait, one more thing, because I know you did the towel drill. You probably had yep. Leo do it. You could do a stick or something to where you re reach out and just feel the, the whip at the end. I like this one. One more. Let me get you up here. Tell me if you like this or not. Glove off. Real quick. Come around this side. Glove what do you off. want me? You're going to be from the stretch. All right. When you come set, I want you to take this. Tell me what you think about it. You can say it stinks. Mm -hmm. Land. Just reach out and land. To, guys get lazy here. Right. To feel what this is doing. The Everything that you said about your core. To have this to pull. Right. Because they work together. So here's what I would do. To do you try. like this? Go ahead. Step. I, I think it would. So yeah, you, just, just pull. Pull. Yeah. To feel that. As opposed to being lame with this. The propensity to fly over. Right. No? So in closing, no. That's, I like any drill that's going to get you to a point where I call <laughs> this box right here. Yep trying to keep everything in the box. So the glove hand, let me see the glove real quick. Qu as quiet as you can keep this front side okay. and this head, yep. I call keeping the box. Here's the way I used to pitch. I used to get it out of that box, and I used to think that that was the way to rotate and deliver power. Okay. Then I learned the best way is to keep it in the box. My head's going straight. My glove is quiet. Now I land in a position where I could feel that's the Greg Maddox. Slash. Right, you know another thing about Greg Maddox you say? Keep your eyes level to the ground. Yeah. Mad Dog would talk about when I throw, don't pull your head off. Maddie, see the head right here? You pull your head off, guess what? The head goes that way, the ball goes that way. That's right. That's Keep right. your le head level when you read this uh, prompt they're going to break. What a good cardio we just did. No, I, I got it. But, and that entire package can be yours for $29.99. <laughs> Including the stick.